All right, this is the Dame Moore NBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks Company live here on YouTube on a Sunday evening. It's April 14th, and the regular season is over. That sounds crazy to say. The Wolves fell to the Phoenix Suns uh, today for the third time this season, and with that loss, they fall to the number three seed in the West where they will play uh, the Phoenix Suns uh, in, in round one. We have six days until game one, so with the show just this week, we're going to have Plenty of coverage uh, coming through. You know, I haven't really had much time to think too much about this matchup. We're recording this pretty much right after uh, the game. But we're going to have all the guests on uh, over the course of, of this week. And, yeah, we're going to take a first crack at it. Tonight I have Kyle Tige here with me uh, to do that. What's up, Kyle? What's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> you can't, you can't I'm, I'm not no, all I, somber. I, I'm, no, there's no, no. no somberness for me. Uh, again, I told you before, if this is, if this is it for me as a good guy, it, it's all over. Um, 125, 106, they got their ass handed to them. Uh, just right off the rip, they got punked. Uh, whether you care about that first game back in what, I think it was like December, that first Suns game. I said, throw it out. You said, throw it in. It doesn't really matter. Cause that game was still weird, but the last two games in the last couple of weeks, no answers, no answers for this team. And I guess you win. Because you said the Pelicans yesterday would be a tougher matchup. I said, or the, no, the more yeah. preferred matchup you said would be the Pelicans. I said the Suns. Doesn't look great today. Um, but to the top, you said the regular season is over. Talk us through. I think there are people that think the, the postseason is over. No, no, I, I, it, no, it isn't. No, no, we're going to, we're going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to move forward calmly <laughs> and collective, uh, collected. Um, you want to talk to Second Apron? <laughs> no, no, I. So, I mean, I, I do. I, I do think the the Suns uh, are a a tough matchup. In my opinion, mm-hmm. I thought it was a tougher matchup than the Pelicans, but I hope that wasn't ever like misconstrued as me thinking that if they played the Suns, it would that the Suns should be favored or like heavily favored. I think we're we got a we got a good series. You know, I think it's one that deserves a seven game. You know, whoever you think is going to win in seven, right? Like it, it's. Um, it, it, it feels like that. I mean, I'll take some more time to, to dig into it and think about it over these, you know, these next few days and, and, you know, we'll, we'll come to it, but we'll take a, we'll take a first, we'll take a first bite at it. Uh, I did want to say just right off the, the jump here that, um, we are doing a live show on Friday day before game one is on Saturday, right? We have that. I don't think we have the time of game one, but by the time people are, you know, if you're not listening to this live right now. Uh, we'll know what time game one is on Saturday at Target Center. Um, that'll be a blast. I think by Friday, you know, however everyone's feeling right now, <laughs> you know, we can... people will need a drink. Exactly. Yeah, else. The season's yeah. over. People will at least we can still drink on Friday and the rest of the summer. Yes, there's there's answers here. There, there, there's answers here to to this matchup. And, and we're going to we're going to talk about them. And we're going to talk about the answers that Phoenix might have, um, too. But we're going to do that throughout this week, but also at Falling Knife. It's going to be fun. Let's all get there together. Kyle's going to Kyle's coming in uh, from Portland, not just for that, but to, to cover, to cover these games. And these, these shows are really fun at falling knife. Me, Kyle, Britt Robson, uh, six o'clock, get there for like a happy hour, seven o'clock. We're going to start the show and then there'll probably be a play in game on. So again, falling knife um, this coming Friday at 6 PM, get there, get a seat. All right, Kyle. Um, and and for the listeners who are live on YouTube here, we are gonna yeah. we're gonna coops in the background. He's gonna be putting up questions on the screen. We're gonna be answering them, but I do want to kind of just treat this in many ways like a normal podcast where we do what we do. We the, what are the what's line item one, two, and three, and kind of move our way through those things. To me, Kyle, just to dig right into to the game, um, we know that there is a this team is difficult to match up with. Uh, And not just for the Wolves, but in the way where in a different sort of way, we've talked a lot about like Zion is tough because he's at the four and they don't really have the physical matchup for him there. That was the case for the Pelican series, right? Of why that would be tough. I think what we've learned in these two games against Phoenix um, over, over this last week and a half is that there's a similarly difficult proposition here in matching up with Kevin Durant. And it's not that Anthony Edwards can't do a, a decent job there. It's not that, um, Jade McDaniels can't take that at times too, but they they need to find answers for for Kevin Durant and the recourse of Kevin Durant being a power forward is that the Wolves power forward is now on a guard 
and oftentimes Grayson Allen. So that's Carl Anthony Towns in the starting lineup or, you know, Nas Reed maybe off the bench. Um, that That's a that's a problem uh, in this matchup. It was a it was a problem tonight. What do you let's just start there with the, the Durant matchup and how the Wolves kind of match with a team being as big as the Wolves are match with the team that, um, you know, plays kind of plays four wings and, and one center. Yeah, I was just checking out the box score. It was kind of wild because we had our Nurkic talk the other day, right? I'm pro Nurkic. You don't think he's that much of a deal. He only played 20 minutes tonight. They only really played seven guys, 10 minutes or I'll more. I'll trouble for Nurkic, yeah. Yeah, um, but like Drew Eubanks, as we get into the series, I, I would imagine there are, there are games where Drew Eubanks doesn't play because I think the Suns, going back to kind of what you just asked, will play really small, and the Wolves will be faced with a decision. I mean, their whole mantra unofficially this year has been size matters. They play way bigger than their opponent. They've turned Nas mm-hmm. Reed into a wing. Uh, they always would have two big guys out there. I mean, Kyle would play the four as well, too. So it is really going to put to a test. You know, it's called, there's so many narratives, too, that I want to, like, we can touch on at some point. But uh, mm-hmm. you have the two biggest trades in the NBA in, like, the last five years going off yeah. in this series, right, with the KD trade and the Gobert trade. And one team is going to come out on top, and one team is going to make that trade look much smarter, and the other trades, the other teams going to make that trade look really stupid. So, uh, yeah, I think you know, looking ahead to a playoff matchup, it's like how much can you get Jaden on McD- or uh, Jaden on KD, and then also kind of an elephant in the room of how we played tonight. But I think when Carl's out there, I would put Carl on KD because where else are you going to put him, right? Like you can't. I mean, I guess you unless you want to go Carl on Nurkic and then have Rudy just please for the love of God try to help us slow down the slim reaper but that that's the answer as much Jaden as you can get i mean he wasn't even in foul trouble again tonight and then kate or you know carl on him too but uh those are the only options right because because to get into it one more thing i don't think this is not a hot take by the way i don't think kyle anderson can play in the series i just i don't i don't i they're gonna kill you vogel is such i was looking back at like their run in the bubble when they won that title like people maybe forget that vogel's a defensive coach they're just they're gonna make kyle anderson be that guy that has to take shots and kyle's been reluctant again to take shots so if you don't have that in your pocket it's gonna be how much Jaden and how much carl can you throw at kd uh and then the, the wing guys gotta figure out brad and, and booker um i i asked cat about this uh after the game uh hour ago or so uh specifically about this kd matchup um and i'll just play that clip right here Durant's guarding you. You're guarding Allen on, on the other side there. Kind of inverts with you and Ant. What's the key to making that work, you know, smoothly with the cross match? Um, get your track shoes on and just be able to do whatever is asked. Um, the game's going to have so many. It's going to be a chess match now. And, uh, you know, uh, against this team, uh, we've been playing checkers with them all year in the regular season. It hasn't worked out well. So, you know, in the playoffs, every, as you guys know, and, um, it steps up to another notch. So we're going to have to play chess with them and find different ways that we could uh, utilize our our size, our length, and um, be the best team we could be uh, come game one. People are going to say, because of the size of this group, that you can't play chess, that there's only a certain mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. amount of ways that you can play. Why can this team you know, get into that chess match and make it work? Because I mean, we got 15 guys. <laughs> this, is, this is not a, a one-man sport. It's a, this ain't golf. This is basketball. We have a great team. We have great guys in this locker room, and all of us are selfless and, and willing to do whatever it takes to win and to bring wins here to to the fan base here, to Minnesota, and give ourselves the best chance to do uh, some really special things this postseason. So, like I said, I'm, I'm really excited that we had to take the difficult route to get past round one, and uh, it's only right. It's going to make us better. It's going to uh, test our mental fortitude, mm-hmm. and it's going to test our discipline. Those are going to be things that if we – Get past round one. Uh, we're going to need those type of things if we expect to be a championship team. So there's no better place to uh, put it to the test at the highest level than in, uh, you know, series one. I think, Kyle, with that, in testing the mental fortitude, you know, using the, maybe not the, all 15 guys in the roster, but using different ways of matching up, probably, you know, I think what that gets at is, you know, some guys aren't going to be able to play very much. Like you said, Kyle Anderson or whatever. Like, I think game to game, matchup to matchup, as you make a plan, given how big the Wolves are, 
and the advantages that that presents, but also the, you know, the ways it makes them susceptible. It's going to be right, right off the bat, you know, game one, a willingness to adjust and, you know, let go of what has been a very structured rotation, um, very structured who plays when they play all those sort of things like this, this matchup pushes you um, to be, to be different. And I, I don't, I think like they can, I, I, I think it's not that they don't have answers for this. I don't think this is, this breaks them. If it is at the point where you can't afford to put Ant, who's the two on Grayson Allen, or, or sorry, on Kevin Durant, and then have to put Carl Anthony Towns on Grayson Allen, who's, you know, the other shooting guard, you know, then then you just go into your bench, which is a, a weapon at, at that point. You can you can play a four guards lineup at times. You can have Cat or Rudy at the five, and you can maybe put Nikhil out there and and he's he's on Grayson Allen or something. If that ends up being being an issue, I think this team has a a depth, and they're just going to need to embrace playing different styles of play that maybe um, will change the minute loads or the roles of of some of the guys throughout the season. But that doesn't need to be viewed as getting played off the court or anything. I don't think. I think it needs to be viewed as a, a way in which they can counter a team that has you know largely had had their number this season. Yeah, fuck chess. I don't want that analogy used. I don't think it's chess. I think it's boxing now. I think this team's strengths are its size and its depth and its defense. And against this team, they, they've never brought that. Like even tonight, whether they had a chance to win or whatever, and whether a regular season game matters, they didn't, they, they did not show fight. Like, I mean, we talk about like their worst losses. It's all against this team. Like they, they never really got blown out all season. You know, they've had a couple blown leads in those Hawks games or whatever. Um, they never lost three in a row. But against this team, they don't fight, man. And I, I'm not saying they quit or anything, but like three games now, Anthony Edwards has 43 points on 42 shots. He took seven shots tonight and had five turnovers. And it's not all his fault. I mean, again, Carl had five turnovers. Ant had five turnovers. Nas had four turnovers. Um this the, the the reason I find myself almost calm with all of this is because I really do think to exercise the final demons of this franchise, you just got to beat a team that no one thinks you can beat. Uh, and that would be that would be this Suns matchup. I mean, they the guy, Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert played some of their best basketball today. The I old guys, that. the old guys show up. Uh, this is not an excuse. This is a diagnosis. This is a young team <laughs> and young might be immature, but. Nikhil, Nas, Ant, Jaden played basketball today in game 82, the biggest game of their season, like they were all under 25. Mm. Uh, and they have to show up. I mean, again, Carl, you and I talked yesterday about how against the Hawks, I thought maybe he played 98% like Carl and 2% like Nas. And I was like, maybe that's, you know, going in the right direction. Maybe we get to 70-30. He was 100% back to Carl today. Like there was a possession where he posted up Grayson Allen at the top of the key took a step inside the three point line, took a long two after like just kind of holding on to the ball. I mean, there's just no ball movement. Ant doesn't trust the pass right now. He's probably getting off of it too much. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he's got to just be more of an attacker. But I, I still embrace this matchup. You know, I know the Wolves are slightly underdogs now according to the books, but uh, they've got to find the same things that we've talked about all year. That were like, I want to see adversity. I want to see how they handle it. They will win this series if they solve the offense because I'm still not really worried about the defense. I think that'll come. Yeah. I think they'll play small, but the offense, man, they let's get into that. The biggest game of the year. And the kid who we said is the best player on the team, who I believe is a franchise player, took seven shots. Yeah. And had a million turnovers. I mean, they had 19 turnovers in, in the first half. And, and obviously, you know, you, you see that number. And you go, okay, well, that's not going to happen again, right? And you're right. They're probably not going to turn it over 20-plus times um, in, in a playoff series. But Phoenix is going to continue to play Ant the way mm -hmm. that led him to a bunch of turnovers, right? We've been we've been talking about for, I mean, really since, you know, since Cat's been out, how every single team is putting two on the ball on Ant every time you bring a screen, right? That's – we know that, right? And and honestly, the Wolves have, have found answers for that. They have – other offensive weapons that once they can start playing four and three, they can beat you. And with Carl Anthony Towns, they should have another option there. The real issue I'm seeing defensively and what is ultimately limiting Ant shots is they're basically 
I mean, this is the most gap help I've seen like you just take ant at the top sons yeah yeah you know it's like it's ant at the top and there's functionally like a triangle of players there it's the guy who's on the ball with him there and then you got like kd in on the right side gap help and you got booker or you know beal or something in the the if it goes left gap help right there and that triangle moves around the floor with ant it can't be a triangle you, you can't ant will not be able to beat his first guy, and then no matter which way he goes, have to beat another guy before needing to get to the rim. You need to remove, you need to force Phoenix to remove one of those gap helpers. And to do that, you need to have other, another offensive option to go to uh, that, you know, that, that requires that sort of attention. Now, if it was Cat and he was healthy and he was playing, offense like he was in December you know there's there's ways in which to get to that they need some of that they, they're going to need to use cat to get attention and then they're going to need to use Rudy Gobert as a dive man role man or have him in Mike Conley or him and Ant being playing two-man game to just get it so you don't have a net of three guys surrounding Ant at all times because what's going to happen is if they don't break that down Ant is either going to only take seven shots in a game or he's going to have a bunch of turnovers. Like it, it just, th that is not, nobody is going to be able to break that basically a three person layered wall there. And it's on Finch to figure out how to empower that. I don't have the answer for that right now, um, but we know this team has other offensive weapons and other offensive options that can, can be impactful here. You need to force Phoenix to not put as much attention on Anthony Edwards as they are right now. Cause they're, they're like cheating, you know, like and that, that's my boxing analogy. Like that's the chess mm -hmm. thing. I don't think they have punched back once. And if you want to be really optimistic, I guess you could say that maybe the wolves are saving all their best cards for the playoffs. I don't believe that because yeah. today was a pretty big game. Uh, you know, that one in those one and two seeds get to play teams that have to play extra basketball. That would have been nice. Now the Suns get the same week off that the Minnesota gets. Uh, but they just haven't, it, and they didn't lose the game because of this today, but it sticks in my brain. Like they come out in the fourth quarter, there's like a little momentum. I think they're down 12 and they, that they played that lineup. That was, I think it was Rudy, Kyle, McLaughlin, Conley, and no, nah, yeah. and nah, that they can't play that lineup. Like that again, I'm not like an anti Kyle Anderson person. Like I think some people are, but there's just certain lineups that Finch has really loved and gone square peg in a round hole throughout the whole season and tried to prove us wrong. And it's, and it has, it's worked at times, but they not are against going, this team. Yeah. not against this team. And they're going to have to do again. If you want to peel it back 20 minutes now, take a deep breath. I, I don't think this team isn't the best defensive team in the league. I still do. I still think they have that in their po pocket. I think they have the depth, but they're going to have to do some things differently over this next week. They're going to have to add in some, you know, plays or schemes that we basically haven't seen. And if that is, I don't know if it's as aggressive in game one as starting to keel over Carl. I don't think it's going to be that drastic, but mm -hmm. you got to play smaller. You got to play more. I mean, your core and strength is your defense. And that might have to be more minutes for Nikhil. And just again, Jaden on KD, Anton Booker, uh, Na on, on Beal, and then have Mike out there kind of chasing around that four spot because that's going to be, I mean, there was no Eric Gordon tonight which I think is worth mentioning because yeah, that's Royce O'Neal played a lot of minutes, but Eric Gordon is just another one of these guards that, I mean, they shot 16 for 29 from three Beal and Grayson Allen combined for nine for nine. Are they going to shoot like that every game? Probably not, but all in all the biggest takeaway and you were there. I'm, I'm curious, you know, after the break or whatever, if you want to talk about what the vibe was like in the locker room, mm -hmm. this Suns team has no fear of the wolves. None. I mean, they were, well, they came into because... their house and, punched him in the face, literally. Bradley mm -hmm. Beal was ready to scrap with Finch, and they laughed all the way home. Yeah, no, it's... And what normally is what makes teams fear the Wolves? It's the defense. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and now we're looking at the Wolves' two worst defensive games of the season both come against this Phoenix team, and they're pretty gruesomely bad, right? So you need to you need to make some, some defensive changes there to, to be able to... Yeah, to, to be able to make this work better because 
the Suns are ready for this version of defense against the Wolves. I think I think yep. we know that. Uh, we'll grab our first break here. Uh, today's show was brought to you by your home improvement company. You see Steve Little up here on the screen. He was sitting courtside. I think he was in the Mark Lori seats, actually, uh, court courtside <laughs> today. Uh, your home improvement company um, for for home renovations. If you have a, a project um, this this spring uh, that you're considering, they have. Uh, for they have deals going on for windows and bathrooms. It's buy two windows, get two free uh, for all of April. And for a bathroom renovation, whether it's like a whole big, you're doing the whole bathroom or just a simple shower, bathtub uh, change, they're doing thirty percent off on that as well. Um, it's zero zero money down, zero interest, no payments uh, until twenty twenty five. And we would just love it if you're considering this uh, to consider. Uh, to consider your home improvement company. If you're considering a home renovation, consider your home improvement company. And you can do that by going to yourhomeimprovementco.com or you can call them at 866-777-YHIC for a consultation. Again, that's your home improvement company where it's your home made better. And then just quickly, Kyle, I want to mention, you know, prize picks. I think that's going to be fun uh, this week oh, yeah. for the for the play or play in games. I get play it in season mixed up all the time. Um, go to prize picks, use prize uh, the prize picks app promo code Dane. And I think if you're already sitting down to watch these games, you know, put five bucks or whatever on it to, to be able to have a little extra on the line. You've seen all these teams. You've seen the wolves play them all a bunch of times. You got a good feel for them. And I think it's just a way to kind of make it fun. So again, prize picks.com prize picks app promo code Dane. All right, let's uh, let's continue rolling on the defense. And Coop, I'll have you if you just want to like throw questions up um, from from people uh, in the live chat here on YouTube. We can we can kind of hit on some of those. But but again, Kyle, like I said before the break, the Wolves' two worst defensive games of the season um, came came against Phoenix, and then the third game is their worst offensive game. I think we kind of know like what the answers are offensively right or what what they have to do not that they're necessarily going to you know figure those out it's ball movement it's body movement it's figuring out some spacing so you're able to so you're able to punish them i'm i'm more concerned about the defense than i am the offense do you, do you agree with that in this matchup no but okay. you're smart i mean no because i think today they let go of the rope because again they didn't fight they didn't you know they didn't step up to the moment in game 82, a game that they, they would have won. They would have hosted, you know, a playing team. Um, I just can't get over the fact of the defense you just talked about in segment one with the Suns and the way that they're throwing. This is like the analogy we talked about with Ant, right? When it's either raining, he knows how to deal with the rain, but when he sees rain coming, he doesn't know how to, I mean, mm -hmm. he has not solved this rain is coming thing uh, with this triangle. So that, I mean, the turnover state 24 to 12, the Suns took 16 more shots than the wolves and they had 13 offensive rebounds uh yeah again and i'm kind of all over the place here with offense versus defense but to me it's like i still believe even the wolves defense is bad it's still top six in the league oh yeah no i mean i don't think it's but, like but I'm, I'm more concerned about going into a matchup here against a proven coach i mean that's one of the things like if you wanted to say if we do the thing and i wanted to do this with you if we do the thing where we go you know it's a t column it's like who has the best player who has the best coach they're entering this matchup not with the most proven coach. And I'm a big Finch guy still, but like Vogel has done this before. He's made a championship level defense with whatever pieces he's had. And he had better defensive pieces with that Lakers team. But he clearly has a scheme now against mm -hmm. Ant. And I think some of it is, and Brad Beal keeps saying it post game after post game, follow Ant, follow his ass. Mm -hmm. Like they're just going to be really physical with them because they're probably saying in the huddle, he's going to complain. He's not going to get back on defense. We'll get transition points. So, the best defense for the Wolves against the Suns, Dane, to me, is scoring points mm -hmm. and getting the ball taken out from under the basket. You know what I mean? Like being able yeah, to that's probably a good way to put it. Like, I, I guess what I'm saying is I think it's in this matchup, it's harder for them to be themselves defensively. Like that that's version. True. Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? Yep. And, and again, not impossible. It's just it's just harder. It's a team that a team that stretches it. Again, I go back. I'm really, at least for today, very focused on this Durant Allen ant cat cross match i think that's a problem um that it you know takes away some of the solidarity of of the wolves defense it's it's the two players i trust least defensively on this team to execute execute you know they're both busting their ass like i think they're trying defensively um 
but that's a lot on cat and ant defensively. If, if that is in fact the way they match up, it's the way they matched up tonight. Um, it just, if they don't, if they aren't able to do their jobs, then it makes it hard to unlock the Rudy and his dominant presence defensively and jaded McDaniels as, as well too, because they'll just kind of lean to the other, to the other areas. I don't know. I, offensively, while again, I've been impressed by Phoenix's defense. I've watched a handful of their games, not the two against the Wolves recently. The defense has been good. I just think with some coaching, with some time to plan for this, there's ways that you can break what Phoenix has been doing against them defensively and force them, um, you know, force them to make an adjustment defensively too. I'm I'm a little bit more confident in that than I am their ability to figure out the Durant matchup exactly. Um, but again, there's, there's options there, right? If you, if you get to the point where you're like, we can't figure this out with Ant and cat on the floor, then all right, like mix it up. You do have the depth of other options. Is that Nas? Is that going small going to Nikhil, um, and kind of sliding Jaden up to the four there that like, that's one right there, right? Just put Jaden on KD, put Nikhil on Booker. And then, you know, maybe Ant is on Alan, Mike, you know, like the, the, there's, there's different ways to do it. What presents the issue is is playing, you know, playing both of the bigs at, at the same time because neither Rudy or Cat are a good matchup for for Kevin Durant. You know, like right. that's just that's just like of course. Um, but it doesn't mean they don't have other answers for that. If that makes sense. Yeah, I just and and maybe you will watch the tape and talk to people from Phoenix and have Britt on it and prove some of this wrong. I just come back to the fact that the Suns might have one of the worst bench in the league. And I, and again, I know there's more games off and or days off in between these playoff games and stuff, but the wolves, in my opinion, in these two and a half games or three games, if you want to call it, haven't made Phoenix work on the defensive end. Like they're playing good defense, but they're, you know, back to your triangle thing, the shell, it's damn near like a zone. It's not, but it like, I mean, they're just yeah. not making them. They're not swinging the ball. They, Jim and Grady were on on this today during the call. It's like watch Phoenix go corner to corner with the basketball. That makes your defense work. The Wolves mm-hmm. don't do that. I mean, they get so again today. I think their highest turnover games are where they probably have their lowest assist games, which I know doesn't sound like breaking news, but it's because they just hold onto the ball, hold onto the ball, and they don't swing it to the left, swing it back to the right. And I think they got to make them work on defense. And to me, again, to answer this whole formula, it's like if their offense can figure it out, I'm not worried about their defense. To your yeah. point, you're like, I don't know if the defense can be good enough. Again, I just come back to they haven't done anything offensively. 43 shot or 43 points on 42 shots. When I f- saw that tweet or like looked it up, that was that's I mean, that is a legitimate red flag that your best player is basically getting one point per shot attempt uh, and not even getting up a ton of shot attempts. Like at least go down swinging today with 22 shot attempts, right? But he got seven. So yeah. the offense, I don't want to say it's broken, but the offense is going to have to be, to me, the thing that they go to work on every day these next six or seven days before the game start on Saturday. I, I asked Finch about that uh, in, in particular. Um, it's actually two questions back to back. One about the Grayson Allen matchup, which is what we were talking about before, and then kind of getting Ant more shots against that that gap, gap help. I'll play that clip here. Obviously, they have their their three main guys, but Allen has also been a, yeah. a real weapon for them. What what can you do uh, with that matchup? On the often have Carl or Nas on him tonight. It seems. Yeah, we got to get to him. We got to close him down. We got to get you know he's got way too much space out there. Um, you know, and, and then when he's when and we're giving him too many angles, I think to drive it. When we do close him down, he's just getting by us a bit cleaner. And then you mentioned the gap help on on Ant. Is there something you can do to? Um, like make it so they can't have that on in both the right gap and the left gap. Well, we got to cut. You know, I don't think we cut the floor very well tonight. Um, you know, we talked about that. We got to be willing to cut next to these ISOs, um, and we got to be you know play a little quicker when we get them. Cut next to them. We got to move the ball multiple times in the possession. It's just too sticky. You have any reaction to any of that, Kyle? No, I was just focused on the comment Coop put up that said, uh, didn't Ant average 30 last year against the Suns? How did Frank Vogel shut him down? Well, Frank Vogel wasn't the coach of the Suns last year, so that's probably the answer. Uh, no, I mean, what Finch said is, is right. I just, you know, this is going to be, this is a big moment. I will just say it, spoiler alert, I do think, uh, this is an optimist, I do think the Wolves will figure it out. I think they'll win this series, but it's going to be a, they're going to have to do things, Dane, that we haven't seen all season. 
And that includes Finch. Like Finch is going to have to, when, when the going gets tough, I joked to you once that when the going gets tough, he just tells Kyle to go in and doesn't tell him who to go in for. He's just like, just get in there, like save the day. Right. I don't know if that's there. I think that might have to be Nikhil because I think it's not just going offense to defense. You're going to have to play guys that not only can hold their own on defense and chase Grayson Allen around or chase Eric Gordon around or, you know, keep Royce O'Neal like off the boards. They're going to have to be an offensive threat as well uh, because the those guys get it, right? Nikhil gets it. Nas gets it. I don't know. I just – I was a little stunned today. I'm still a Carl guy, but it he just was the same old Carl today. And is he fully healthy? I don't know. But he's going to have to be kind of an X factor in all of this as well. I thought he would come in and stretch the floor more for, for Ant and get things unlocked a little bit. And today was about as much locked up as this offense has looked, I think, all year. Like, can you think off the top of your head quick, just a, a time where maybe yeah. the production was, I mean, they still dropped 106 or whatever because Wendell Moore came in and made all the shots. But have you ever seen them look as downtrodden or defeated on the offensive end than they did today? I Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe not off the, the, the top of my head. I mean, normally... Normally, one of their main sources of offensive income is at the four for them, Cat, yeah. Nas, or Kyle. I mean, Kyle has contributed to to good offense at, at times this season. Season, obviously, you know, pre deadline, he, he wasn't. Um, but we did find some Kyle Anderson answers, and I think to your your point previously, if maybe he can't play in this series, I would say he can play in this series for sure if he can play point guard. Like if he can really be the playmaker initiator, um, but if it devolves into him in the corner and there, you know, Phoenix, any opponent is going to take, take advantage of that. So you need to be, you need to be super intentional about getting cat Nas and Kyle going offensively. If you're finishing this yeah. in my, in, in my opinion, all three of them, like they need to be uh positive impacts on, on that side of the floor. Because again, I think you do that knock down one of those pins then okay things are a little bit more open for ant there there goes one of the guys who's just helping in there on ant taking away forcing him to only take you know seven shots in the game or turn it over that that it needs to there, there needs to be more cat spacing there needs to be and if he's on the interior, he can't lose that spot. I mean, Grayson Allen, granted, he was like pushing him a couple times, mm -hmm. but he was pushing him off of his spot. And because Carl's 6'11 and Grayson Allen's 6'5, 6'6, six, 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 whatever, like they're going to let him be rough with him there. And I remember there's just like one where, where Carl had a little duck in, like tried to catch it kind of like right in front of the rim. But Allen just kind of like pushed him out just enough out of lane. And then it's where Carl pivoted and found Nas for a kick out. On the other side, Nas, Nas missed the three. Man, that's a one-on-one. -on -one. Cat's got the ball five feet yep. from the bucket, and Grayson Allen is all that stands in front of him. That's got to be a bucket. That has to be. Um, so so Carl, I think I think a lot of this starts with you know you need more Carl. What are the best ways to get more Carl? Right. Um, what are what are you going to to try to empower that? Because again, I think you hit that and and you open up things things for the others they need something to more to happen offensively and i just i do think they will be able to to find something i think there'll probably be some rough quarters where you're like oh my gosh that was a bad offensive quarter but i don't think we're gonna be like that was a bad offensive game you know yeah like three yeah. of the four quarters were rough offensively that's why i kind of go back to defensively i'm like that's a tough matchup all the time you know and uh i, I don't know I, I weirdly for such a good defensive team I, I do have kind of more concerns about the the defensive side of the floor just based on based on matchups. They also got to figure out the first quarter thing because now it's yeah, like that, that was like... a good question. Yeah, throw throw that one up there, Coop. This is from from Chris Lupos, uh, Danny Kyle. Why is this team so consistently terrible in the first quarter? It seems like every single game they're down twelve five minutes into the game against literally any team. Why don't you answer that one first? <laughs> I don't have an answer. Or just your, your that, just thoughts on that? No, it's been happening. I mean, it's. That goes back to you, and is this because they don't run enough structured stuff in the in the first five or six minutes? You know, are they too carefree and loose? Do they think because they have done that a lot, and it's typically not been bad? I mean, you don't normally see you know teams that are just better than their opponents come out and just strike first, and then it's all, you know wire to wire leads or wins. 
I mean, you, you do have a feeling out process. Now, in this type of situation, you felt this out enough now that when game one tips on Saturday, you should already be like thinking and like in a, in a pre-sweat, like you're in round four of a fight. But I mean, they, they come out flat against bad teams. That's one thing. But when they start coming out flat against good teams, like they did tonight, there's no more bad teams left mm-hmm. in the, in this, in this playoff run. Like it's only good teams. So I don't know. I have no diagnosis. I do think, I do think they missed good shots tonight. Like there are a couple threes I can think of that Jaden got or Nas got, but that also was just going to be, I'm guessing what Vogel's saying to them is like, if we're going to lose to these guys, I want Jaden McDaniels to, to have make five points. threes. Yeah. yeah. I want Nas Reed, you know, yes, he's shooting 41%, but you know, like everyone has told happy wolves fans all season, do it in the playoffs, right? Yeah. They're not going to let the, to the best of their ability, Anthony Edwards beat them. And to me, I know I'm kind of not answering your question directly, but I would just say that if any box score ends in this playoff series with Ant having 10 assists, they'll win that game. Like that would be my bulletin board thing is like, Ant, if you can get to 10 assists, that means you have navigated the triangle. You've seen the rain coming. You've kicked it to your teammates and they've hit shots or they've made baskets. And that's going to be a way to kind of open this thing up. I've seen some people be like, Ant's just got to get to the rim more because they don't have a rim protector. I don't think that's the answer. Do you? Well, he is. I mean, the, like we're, we're calling it the triangle, I guess, right now. Like, right, like I think it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, it's not that guy on the ball, gap help, gap help yeah. on, on each side. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't matter really if there's a rib protector, if there's basically three guys there to, to help on Ant. That's why all the, the turnovers happened, you know, in, in the first quarter. Ant, Ant brought this up. We're, we're back to, you know, now the local TV stations are coming to games after not having <laughs> been at Target Center the entire season asking great questions like how important is home court advantage uh to that ant said it didn't look like it was tonight huh yeah for sure but then he goes into away from the stupid question into (laughs) we just got to compete in the first quarter if we compete in the first quarter because every other quarter we was able to stay with them just the first quarter we can't turn the ball over so much like i mean this has been a thing with the first quarters for a while now and i think Um, that's true right i know i think it's him i think he needs to compete in the first quarter Yes, but I think that's true. I know you're going to look at a box score and say, well, the, the Suns outscored them 36 to 28 in the fourth. That would that quarter was meaningless because I don't want to say they quit, but they damn near kind of just let go of the rope and brought mm-hmm. the backups in pretty early. Yeah. But yeah, that's how you and I analyzed the last to 22 Suns. in the first quarter, man. Yeah. That's how we analyzed the last Suns game, though. No, I said to you, if you take it, or maybe we're texting about it. I said, if you take away that first quarter, I thought the Wolves played them pretty even for the last three. Yeah. And then you were like, yeah, we can't take away the first quarter. Right, right, so, right. Well, it's from the result. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. You know what I mean? So like that's, it, fair. that's fair. I, I don't, I don't think this kind of okay. It's getting everyone's kind of letting it out now a little bit. We'll let it out throughout the week, but I don't. Well, I don't care. That guy is ridiculous. <laughs> Jim Rich, Fox Nine, ridiculous. Go listen to the post game question. I mean, anyway, get out of uh, the way. Piv- Let pivoting, pivoting back, pivoting yeah. back. <laughs> I, I do think no. I'm as a fan base. I meant we're letting it out. I don't think this is. Because you asked before we hit record to me and Coop, like, what's the vibe? I've been working. What What do you guys hear? Sweep. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, and we're I, all right. Like, like, I, like, I do think there are levers to be pulled. I think there are better players from top to bottom. I mean, we have, we've done 40 minutes now, and we haven't really addressed one of the other elephants in the room. I love to do, in football matchups, who has the best quarterback? All right, pick that. And then that's kind of where I lean to bet. In this, it's like, Mm-hmm. rank the top seven players in a snake draft or ever, who would you take? I thought coming into today's game or a playoff series, the Suns would have two of the three best players, Durant, Booker, Wolves have Ant. Today, though, they had the three best players. And Bradley He'll Beal well. is yeah. a complete X factor. He has not played like this all season. But if he if he's going to do that and he's kind of all of a sudden their, like, their mascot, like he's the one that is fearless. I mean, this is Booker's team still, but he's the one that's getting in guys' face mixing it up a little bit. If if Ant has 10 assists in a game, I would bet my life they win that game. If Bradley Beal gets to drop 30, it's over. And they have to find a way mm-hmm. to just make him uncomfortable because he flat out kind of punked them today. And he can't even be... I mean, I don't think typically if you didn't see that today, Dane, would you have had him in the top five players in this series? No, I mean, he's like... A, that right? would have been like the X factor. Like, what version of Beal are are we getting? Like, And, I, and you know, if you would have had a flat game today, you would have been like, well, can he do that? Like, can he give them, you know, an efficient 30? And you would have been like, I don't know. We haven't seen Bradley Beal do that much this season. 
Um, but Bradley Beal, I think Bradley Beal is still a very talented player who took games off this season. You know, mm-hmm. just like yeah. that, that was, I think that was a big part of what became the identity of this Phoenix team was come and go because oftentimes, you know, he did right. Like, yep. um, but, but what we saw tonight was gotta be ready for that too. Like that is, that is a matchup um, that they, that they have to be concerned about too. And, you know, it's Conley on him kind of reminds me of like the Boston matchups where I don't think Conley played bad in those games, but you're like, man, little dudes working harder in this, right? Because he's guarding Bradley Beal, you know, that's, that is, and I think Conley can do some of that, but at the same time, I think ideally you'd rather put him on Grayson Allen, right? And let him be chasing the shooters there in that yeah. situation. And then you have, again, bringing in Nikhil from the bench or something like that. So it can be, you know, McDaniels on Booker, Nikhil on Beal, you know, Anton, Anton KD, Conley on, on Allen, Gobert on Gobert or Towns on, on Nurkic. Uh, I think they have more answers for Bradley Beal from a defensive standpoint. I think they looked at the matchup, like you said, and they went top down and they go, all right, um, we're putting our, our guy, Jaden on Booker. We think this is the best path forward with Ant on Durant. We hope he's able to really turn it up and, and be able to, to guard against him. And then they put Conley on Beal because they deprioritized him. You might need to prioritize him. Uh, you know, more so in, in, in this, in this series, particularly if he's, he's playing like that, but yeah, he, he can be a problem. He can't be as it was tonight. Obviously. There's a good comment here from Dre that said that lineup against the Raptors a couple weeks ago with not Na- Edwards, Mc- McDaniels, Nas and Gobert that beat the Raptors by 48 uh, was great for offense. Beal is an X factor for the Suns. I do think to that comment, like Mike Conley is still an X factor for the wolves. Cause he was great today, but if you if you were if you're trying to diagnose how to fix some of this or to get more defense out there with not dropping an offensive you know potential you you would your first thought would be let's get Nikhil out there more he is yep. as good of a defender this yep. year as Jaden is but I'm not necessarily saying that that means Nikhil has to replace Mike because mm-hmm. without Mike I also worry that this team doesn't have enough floor general out there to kind of keep addressing. Hasn't- yeah, hasn't that been interesting how much more Nikhil has been playing point guard since yeah, Cat got back? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a lot of and no J Mac, no Monte, no Conley minutes. And that's and why I said I don't think one. Kyle plays because there's been an uptick in like maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not. But like, what if we just plug Nikhil in a little more as like a backup point guard? So in the Monty Morris thing, I mean, today he came out with the bench brigade. I would imagine that he is. Mm-hmm. maybe called upon in game three or four, depending on how this all breaks down in the first two games. But for now, I would say he is out of the rotation. Yeah, man. He was weirdly, he was one of the guys who stepped up in kind of cat's place because Nas moved into cat's place when he was hurt. And then they basically replaced Nas's minutes off the bench, which was a big and substantial role with Monte Morris and Jordan McLaughlin. Well, you know, squishing things back down, Somebody, somebody's going to fall off. I think given how good Jordan McLaughlin has been for the last month, they're still leaning that direction. But Monte Morris doesn't play until garbage time tonight. And then on Friday, the, the game against Atlanta, he played five and a half minutes in the first half and didn't come back in the second half. So yeah, I think if we're mapping out what the rotation is going to be, it's the, it's the starting five. It's Nas, Nikhil, and then Kyle and J-Mac are the, the the you're just shaking your no, head no no, no i'm with you kyle I, but like i no, think I'm, that that's i'm with you i just I, I don't know if you want to go to another break or if you want to there no, are no, no no just just I keep wanna, going we'll just dynamically insert the, the i want to i felt good now i went to hot yogurt after the game came back a little heated but i'm feeling so there's nothing in the regular season. yoga <laughs> there's nothing in the regular season that you can point to as a wolves fan or supporter or coach and be like we we did that right but for all the good stuff the wolves did this year and after every dumb tweet I sent, it was always do it in the playoffs. So that is still kind of my energy with this Suns team. Because if you only watch Bally Sports North, the Suns are awesome. But I've watched a lot of other Sun games. And you said this earlier about taking nights off. The Suns whooped the Wolves' ass a couple of weeks ago. And then they followed up like three nights later against the Clippers team without Harden, without Kawhi. They played the seven same, the same seven guy rotation that I talk about with Royce O'Neal and Eric Gordon off the bench. And they just got flat out blown off the doors by the Clippers <laughs> without Kawhi and without James Harden. So yeah. 
there's real film out there, in my opinion. And you, I know you agree with this. There's, there's film out there on how to expose this team and how to punch back and how to shut down what is essentially a small ball team, which mm-hmm. they play Nurkic 25 minutes or whatever, but they really just play KD at center, Royce O'Neal at center. Like they play yep. five out. There are teams that have figured that out. My concern is, is that does Finch, does Tim Connolly, does, you know, whoever owns the team, do they embrace that we did this to get here, but it's playoffs and NBA playoffs to me are yeah. more exciting than any other sport because you can say we were green for six months and to older to figure this out, we have to be red. Yeah. Will they be red for two weeks? And to me, being red is like playing small, playing one big out there. I mean, your team has three centers that are all, you know, studs. Will you be comfortable just playing one of them at a time and playing more, you know, perimeter guys out there or even just, I mean, if, if in that sense, we still think of Nas as the wing, but you know, are there lineups out there? Maybe Nas is at the five mm-hmm. and you just have him surrounded by Jaden and Ant and Nikhil and Mike. Like that's I, a real interesting lineup for me. That's you might as well. Yeah. I wish we would have tried it earlier this season just to see what it's like. But that to me is a lineup that could give them real problems. Yeah. I think, I think that the just Phoenix going extremely small and like Katie at the five, I would assume Vogel, pre-planned not to use that today so as to be able to spring it on them potentially you know in 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 a playoff series i don't think that is going to give the wolves problems i don't and okay, part cool. of that like the the whole gobert in the playoffs played off by small ball thing i don't i don't think that will be defensively a, a major issue for you know for gobert when they went smaller and they went with they kind of did it where they just because both Nurkic and Eubanks were in foul trouble, they went to their third string center, who's kind of like a small ball center mm-hmm. in in Thad Young and Gobert killed it. I mean, that's the, the third quarter. He when it was Eubanks and Thad Young out there. I, did, I think Gobert had three and ones in the third quarter. He, he had eleven straight points for them in the third yeah, quarter. Like that that that's the that's the weird thing is like in this mat like the way Phoenix can play uniquely small. They, they could play uniquely small, even with a center out there, you know, just because KD is the four. I'm more concerned about that lineup that they put out four wings and one center than I am the idea of it going all five. I mean, we've all all five small. We've also seen when has that worked all year in the regular season? Like the Clippers in one of the matchups had some success with it like in the fourth quarter but ultimately then it was like a couple possessions and the wolves kind of got it back going like i think that's something you will hear a lot on espn and you know or other people just talking about it and i get it i'm actually not even ripping on it. i i would think about that in in this in this matchup too but if you have watched all 82 this season for the wolves and seen a handful of different teams throw that at them gobert hasn't had a problem with that Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what, what we always knew about the problem with Gobert at, you know, Gobert against small lineups was his ability to punish it on the offensive side of the floor. It was always overrated how much that impacted his defense. Um, I have a lot more confidence in Rudy's ability to punish that when they go small or, or, or semi-small. The issue is at the four and it's Nas and Kat or Kyle, whoever, Ant's ability to be able to guard Kevin Durant. That that's way more concerning to me than Rudy in space or Rudy with a small on him. Like, I don't know. This team has been preparing for that all season. And, you know, could something happen in the playoffs? Sure. But it's just what I'm we could we could make a, maybe we will later this week make a list of things that are concerning in this matchup. Like I don't know, maybe this will age poorly, but that that's not like in my top ten things is Phoenix going small. Yeah, and I, I should say, I mean, Rudy was awesome today. Right. Yeah. I mean, despite everyone kind of sucking, like he was awesome today. He was seven for nine from the free throw line, which was big in the moment because he was kind of clawing to keep them alive on the offense event. Yeah. Uh, 50 minutes in, feeling better. Like, I can't, I want to go back to 43 points on 42 shots. Like, yeah. this would, this, this season was all about the passing of the torch, you know, putting his name. We were out there, right, on the Las Vegas hotel when he's like, this is Anthony Edwards' team. He's 22. He's the face of the franchise. If if he doesn't, and I know he's a playoff killer, right, but if they don't find ways to unlock him and solve the triangle, 
nothing else matters. I re- I really I mean, can can mm-hmm. you see can you see a, a scenario where Minnesota beats the Suns using home court advantage and their good defense, but Ant never really has a good game? No, no. I mean, so I mean, so then that's like no. you, that. I mean, maybe we have we've just listed fourteen different things and rotations and tweaks. That's maybe they'll show up tomorrow and just we got to figure out how to get Ant going. Mm-hmm. And if we can get him going, it doesn't mean just scoring. I really think that if I, I, th- I think Britch is on this a little more than I am, but maybe he's getting off the ball a little too much. So there is going to have to be this proper blend of facilitating he, while also just attacking. But if he if he's going to be bad, and I'm not even saying it's his fault mostly, but some of it is, if he's going to be bad, they have no chance. But if they can unlock him, to me, that is the first punch back of putting the Suns a little bit on yes. their heels because I don't think the Suns, they are so just on their toes here of we will destroy this team. But you, but you, you punch with Ant by him getting off of it first. That's okay, how it sure. starts. Yeah. Like sure. you need to punish that look with the other four players first. They're going, to, you need to, again, I've said this like you need to make them adjust off of it. That's not like you can't run like some action that is just going to convince them to not play all this help on Ant. The thing that is going to convince them is Rudy gets three and ones in a row. Carl makes yeah. is, is getting and making open corner threes. Britt, uh, to your point, asking about that, because it's been a question. I mean, Ant has done a good job of getting off the ball. When that was when this team really flatlined around Christmas, it was because Ant decided to just bowl through double teams and it was a struggle. And he learned to get off of it. And this team's offense from the time Ant decided to stop going through double teams progressed and moved in the right direction. Bert asked him, do you think you have to get off the ball as much as you've been getting off the ball? Ant said, yes. End of answer. Like, I, I think... Did you get to transcribe that one? I, I did. I actually did do Ant. <laughs> like, well, actually, I was like, let me, you guys, let me do Ant because his answers were all very short and I have to go do this. Um, but I, I think I think Ant is is committed to it. And what, what if I'm Finch and what I'm hammering home to him is like, do it. I promise we're not going to let it be so it gets to the fourth quarter and you will only have seven shots. But mm-hmm. if you do this at the beginning and will you make them adjust, then like, let's go. I asked Finch about it before the game too. And and, and his answer was what, if Ant wants to get more earlier, it's got to be in transition. It's got to, you know, hit mm-hmm. the offensive glass, do some more of those other things to, to get your offense going, to get that rhythm. Cause they're going to try and take that away. Try to take Ant away. Someone else has to go. They start rolling. Phoenix adjust. Okay, Ant. Now it's time. Like let let's go here. Action scripted for Ant in in that in that sort of way. That's at least that's my initial feel off of this. And that all ties back into this point that I want to hammer home with the lack of depth for the Suns. I think Ant again. It can't just be straight line drives to the to the rim because we know that, that doesn't exist. There's mm-hmm. a landmine of this triangle now that we've patented, but. He does in transition. They've never really been a team that runs. You know, they, they're not yeah, top man. five. Tra- Got to go. But that's part of this going from we've been green all year. We're now going to be red. He needs to put I and mean, he needs to physically bully if like Beal's on him. Beal's mm-hmm. not like Beal's a shorter dude than you would think yeah. like standing next to him. So he needs to put the pressure on them. They need to lean into like foul trouble. You know, because again, the Suns just don't have a lot of other guys that they can bring in, but they just don't choose to. They only play seven. They'll play seven guys and then maybe Drew Eubanks in every playoff game they have against the Wolves. That's just, I think, how they've done it all season. Yeah. So I'm with you on the Ant thing, trusting it too. Uh, But the reason I'm not like still, I'm heated, but I'm not overreacting is because this is what we talked about in February. I have it down on my phone. This has all been fun. This has been the second greatest regular season in 35 years. But the story of it is not, can the two bigs work? I think we've seen that enough. Like the two bigs can work. Certain playoff series, maybe not, but that's not the point. Mm-hmm. But how fast can Ant grow up? And I don't mean that as like an immaturity thing. How fast can he diagnose playoff coverages when it's not just a shootout, which it kind of got to be sometimes in those Memphis games? How fast can he diagnose what's going on and be like the most impactful way for me to impact this game and win a game is to get off it early, trust it's going to get back to me, or facilitate. Like He's just going to have to open up his eyes a little bit more to being, you know, the Devin Booker type mm-hmm. archetype of all the different ways that he can impact a game. Because tonight, again, like he only took two threes. I just, I have no answer 
for why he took seven shots. Even if there's a triangle in front of him, why are you not finding more ways to get shots? I, I think, I mean, and I'm not, not, not excusing it. They, they needed to find more ways to, to do that tonight. And, and, and they didn't, I think what's uh, there was Coop put up a question or a comment earlier in the pod and the, Somebody said Ant is a mythical creature in in the playoffs, and he has been. But I think what yeah. we need to remember, let's talk about Ant's first playoff series, Memphis. Memphis's primary focus in that series defensively was Carl Anthony Towns. They pulled Adams off of that right away. It's when the Wolves' offense back then, this is pre-Gobert, right? Ran through Cat in the post all the time. And they went with slow-mo on Cat, and they brought doubles all the you know all the time, and they, they forced – the Wolves to play off of that. And then Ant kind of got to attack against a, a shift of defense. He was not the primary focus. I think with Denver last year, it was more a, a little bit more split between Cat and Ant for who the focus was. But I would say you could almost, even at the beginning of that series, if I'm remembering correctly, it was a little bit more Cat. And what I always point to there is they opted to put Aaron Gordon on Cat and not on Ant. And I think if Ant is number one on your hit list you put Aaron Gordon on him like in this series and in any series when they advance Ant's number one on the scouting report and it's a gap before before you count yeah. to other guys mm -hmm. so again what then what needs to happen somebody else needs to step up in the way that Ant stepped up for Carl in in the two previous seasons and it's got to be Cat it's probably got to be Cat you know that does it and it's tough because it's been you know, he's missed five weeks. He's been back for two games and he's not looked good. You know, it's it's not been, offensively. It has not been that version. I think he did a good job of kind of unlocking Rudy a little bit in that Atlanta game. Offensively, he had, he had some assists, but the dynamic three level scorer who is a problem, who we know Carl is and has in his game. Right. We've seen it over and over again. That has not been there in game 81 and game 82. Uh, they absolutely need that to be able to get the offense going more through Ant. And then if, you know, Cat can't do it, it has to be not. Like, they need that other guy because Ant's not going to be able to just will his way to 33 a game in this against that defensive coverage. He's he's not, you know, whoever, like, a lot of all NBA guys would it, would it be able to. This is a shell coverage that is designed to stop the point of attack at the elbows. Because of Ant. Okay, so what else do we got? Rudy, Cat, Mike, three-point shooters, hopefully. Those things have to happen to, to open up for Ant, I think. I saved my best take for last. All right, let's wrap it. <laughs> so they got their ass kicked today by the Sun, second time in 10 days. Uh, five days ago, I, met, I referenced, because I think this is important, by the way. I think teams will scout other teams that beat the Suns or beat their opponent to see like what worked, right? I mean, that's just basic coaching one-on-one. So after the Wolves lost to the Suns for the second time a little over a week ago, they lost to the or the, you know, the Suns beat the Wolves. They came out flat against the Clippers team without Kawhi, without James Harden, and they lose. And now they're back in the plan. The next night, they played the Clippers again without Paul George or Westbrook and Kawhi and Harden. It was like Amir Coffey, Bones Highland, Bones Highland's cousin, uh, Plumlee and someone else. And the Clippers were up by, I think, six, with six minutes left in the fourth. And the reason I'm saying this stuff is because the biggest way, the biggest X factor to me is going to be vibes. And I know you hate that because it's not specific offense. It's not specific defense. I think you have to come out on, I don't want to say game one is like game seven, but you have to come out. You, you can't, you have to come, you have to win the first quarter. Like you can't be down. You have to come out and punch this team in the mouth again, because I've watched like 50 Suns games and they have so many nights where they love to do what you always coin, they let go of the rope. Like their their fourth quarter Achilles heel is real. I think they've kind of played better in the fourth the last week, but they were the worst net rating team in the fourth quarter in the league for like 76 yeah. games. No, this the team will, is, this team will crumble at times. The Suns the, team will crumble at times. Or at least that was the 82 game but score the of them. Never them. got them to round 10 yeah. of the fight. Yep. So they yep. never got to see what their jaw was like in the you know, their endurance was like in those last couple of rounds of a boxing match. They have to, I, whether it be more structure, I'm sure you and Britt will dive into all this, but whether it be more structure, you know, more timeouts early, just trying to get this thing, get them to the fourth quarter, make them execute and show their Achilles heel. Just like, you know, late game execution has been Minnesota's Achilles heel. 
you got to get them there. You, you have to come out all in full speed. Everyone's sprinting that first 12 minutes on Saturday night, because this Suns team in terms of vibes, I bet you, if you gave them any team in the Western playoff scenario, they would have said, we want to play Minnesota. Like they would have had them be number one on their list of teams. They want to play. Even the Kings have given them like tough times. They have no fear in Minnesota. And until someone strikes back, mm-hmm. you know, that's, you gotta, you gotta come out firing on Saturday night. Uh, Cause this is a hell of a confident team right now in Phoenix. You gotta, you gotta win quarter one and you gotta win game one. Yep. I was just talking to one of the players in the locker room. Like he was like, you know, we're going to be all right. And I was like, you got to win game one. He's like, we got to win game one. You know, I think that's cool. And- that you got to talk to Leonard Miller, but <laughs> I, uh, I do, I do think, you know, as you, as you start to pick apart this series and look into a little more, yeah. I'm not going to be like doom and gloom if they split, but I don't no, think no, they no. can split if they lose game one. Like you got to win that game one, reestablish yourself a little bit and not to get ahead of myself, but kind of this wrestling analogy with the rock and the final boss. Yeah. No one has ever believed in this franchise. No one's ever believed in this team. You have to kind of beat the best to yeah. be the best. And hypothetically, because I know the vibes are down and everyone thinks Suns in four, Suns in five, Suns in three. If you can close your eyes and they can figure this out and Finch turns this team red and they pull some levers and they unlock Ant. If this team, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but if they, if they were to win this first series, something they haven't done in 20 years, because you know all week now it's going to be everyone's picking the Suns. If the Wolves can somehow pull the levers here, fight back, I think in the second round, they're going to be like, they're the worst team for any team to play. Like, they're going to be scary. So this is it, man. Like, should I get off the pot for a lot of these guys? um, Two years into this experiment, eight years, nine years into some guys' career, four years into being a superstar and a movie star. And like, this Mm -hmm. is it, man. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, go beat them. They're the Mm -hmm. last kind of standing big three in the league. Wolves fans wouldn't have felt confident playing anyone. I wouldn't have felt confident playing the Lakers. You would have felt more confident playing the Pelicans, but everyone would have been like, sure. Wolves should be not favored. So, you know, it's it's that time. It, this is not the regular season anymore. Do it in the playoffs. Go do it in the playoffs. Don't be scared. Don't have PTSD. Don't have aching knees. Punch back. And let's see what kind of jaw Phoenix has. And to your question earlier on the vibe in the locker room, that was it. I mean, and everyone, you know, you can go watch the – they basically said that in the the interview. We'll watch news, those check it out. On YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like they, they know, they know there's a like. If they lose this, they're gonna, you know, they're Stuff's gonna hear about it, and yep. um, they're like, but their vibe was we haven't lost it yet, <laughs> you know, like, yep. and it was like we lost them, we lost to Phoenix three times in the regular season. Now it's the playoffs, you know, um, just because you lost them three times in the regular season doesn't guarantee that you're going to lose this series. It makes it fair that Vegas sees it as a 50-50. That, yep. that, that's, what it, that's what it means to me. Um, I didn't think we'd be in the first round looking at a coin toss type series, um, but you are because you got unlucky to be playing what is probably the worst matchup for you in, yep. in the West. Um, yeah, almost. And I agree. As, it is the worst ever. matchup, but I don't think – that that means that it's over. I, and I, I, and I, that, I that's I, what I was. I hope that's what was coming off when what I said there. Like yeah. I, I, I don't think it's over. Um, I, I think, and we're going to talk about it, like you said throughout the week, all these different elements of this. But if they come out and answer a lot of those questions in game one, and the rotation is different, and maybe somebody different starts or whatever it is, um, then there'll be a confidence. So Saturday's big. Saturday's the, big. The Suns, if the Wolves play the Pelicans and the Wolves play the Lakers and they lose that series, it's going to be the same narrative no matter what, right? I mean, it is. It's going to be, you know, you got to blow it up, you know, all this stuff. Legacies are on the line here. And that's what better way to do it than to play a team that is also kind of a big three, another team that made an all in move just like you did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the whole they got KD, but we got Jaden McDaniels. Prove it. Do it. Right. Like Ant's favorite player growing up is KD. Go at him. You know, be be as good as he is, if not better. So I'm excited. We got because... Ishbia. We got Mark. Or, or... <laughs> well, I don't know who we got or, right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, I'm really excited. I really am. I mean, yeah, man. I don't think I would have gotten on this and been like, oh, awesome. They might play the Lakers. Cause I still don't think that's yeah, a good matchup. No, you know gonna, what I mean? It like, was going to come out and be tough. I think it stinks that they're the three now. Um, they didn't a, have a yeah. three seed. They didn't have a three seed season, you know? 
but they had a they had a chance to control that and at least leave today with the two and they didn't you know and they gotta live with that um but it doesn't mean that all of a sudden this team's done or that's not the way you know i, I guess you're telling me and just looking at these toxic comments here on youtube <laughs> um that that's the the sentiment um i know this guy says dane doesn't get it but i mean maybe maybe you know maybe they will get swept by the suns that's I'm always going to try to be honest with what my read on it is. And I'm not going to do predictions now. I'm going to be honest with whatever my prediction is. Once I do it, I want to rewatch these games. I want to rewatch today. Um, I want to go back and maybe even look at that November game. Some too, like let's uh, let's see. Let's really think about what Phoenix did that worked in these three games. And let's ask if let's ask if they can stand, you know, that are those things, for sure going to break the Wolves in the series, or do they have answers for them? I need to look uh, more into it. All I know right now is what stood out to me uh, from, from that game and some some key items. But, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take more time. We're going to dig into it. Uh, the, the plan is just kind of take tomorrow to regroup, think about this, watch <laughs> some stuff. Uh, then Jace and I are going to do Tuesday morning. Uh, Britt and I are going to do Wednesday morning. Uh, Chris and I are going to do Thursday morning. Uh, he has a big feature story uh, coming out. So that one might be a little less, you know, game focused. I think we'll get a lot of that with, with Jason Britt. Um, and then me, Britt and Kyle all at Falling Knife on Friday. I'm really looking forward to that. I think by Friday, you know, we get everyone get kind of calm down, talk ourselves into this a little bit more and uh, still let, um, let this playoffs be what they deserve to be, uh, you know, a fun and competitive environment that we haven't had here in many many years so i'm looking forward to it uh kyle i appreciate you appreciate you doing tj it. warren revenge series <laughs> it's time it's time <laughs> hey if you don't want to do it for us do it for tj warren okay <laughs> could have signed with anyone but this is this is who he chose so That's let's true. tj get his uh revenge but uh it's gonna be a good schedule i said you know let's all digest monday figure the things out a little bit more but uh there's no reason that we've talked all season right that's been a the funnest year we've done doing this for seven years. There's no reason that Saturday night, I don't care who the opponent is. I don't care how bad the first three games have looked. I'm excited to be at target center on Saturday. I'm excited to hear that place. I think it's a real competitive advantage. And I think you and Britt are going to outline a lot of stuff that the Suns have right now that the Wolves got to figure out, but the Wolves still have an extra game and four games in Minnesota, three games in Phoenix, that that's going to be a big deal. So uh, I'm excited to be a fan and stand with a lot of fans on Saturday and uh, make that place loud and see what happens. In the media section, that's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna stand, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> okay, what are they gonna do take my credential. Uh, he's Kyle Tiggy. Um, thank you for doing it, Kyle. Both I mean, two pods uh, over the course of the weekend. Seriously, thank you for doing it. This was an important weekend. I mean, it's crazy that Friday was Carl's return and Lori and A Rod's return and all that, and here we are. And all of a sudden, it's it's playoff time. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move into the playoffs, just like the Wolves and their coaching staff and whatever they're they're gonna do that too. I'm excited. Um, we got. Uh, great smart people coming on the show all week. Great people in the background. Coop, um, Joe Coop. running running things for us uh, on on the back end, and Cam with social too. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's make it happen. He's he's Kyle Tiggy. You can follow him on Twitter at Kyle Tiggy. You can listen listen to him on Flagrant Howls as well over at Score North until Tuesday morning with JC's Kyle. I'm Dane. Peace out.